Hello there, everyone. How are you doing today? Today we're going to be reading two Pokemon Creepy Pasta stories. I hope you enjoy. And if you do enjoy, check me out these websites under the names listed here. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Story 1. Imitator Green It has long since been assumed that Gardevoir are loyal as a species, and whereas science generally agrees with this theory, human thought and social interaction has it met with one message. Untrue. What a pleasant world it would be if the world's evil could be vanished. If every dark type's existence was erased, if hordes of Sylveon could stop wars, it could be safely assumed that every single one of them would correctly do their job. Gardevoir had always been treated like pure innocence and grace. But what about their black holes swallowing up everything in their way? Gardevoir are indeed dedicated. But how different are they psychologically and physically from their trainers? Stories have been told of a loyalty cult, an odd band of human beings dedicated to nothing but happiness for society. Generation by generation, they lost basic skill in decision making, lost all originality. They became naive and vulnerable to manipulation merely empty shells, made to be filled up whatever ideas other people had. But hey, that doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter how susceptible they are to abuse and such because they're kind, helpful, and motherly. As one can likely guess, they eventually evolved into Gardevoir. Black holes were not natural, just illusions formed from rumors of so-called magical entities and desire to fulfill society's expectations and please the crowds. Desire. Desire is where it gets weird. No sane man would want theft, kidnapping, murder, except the guard of war under ownership of the thieves, kidnappers, murderers, a good friend, a defender, a guardian angel and confidant to tell your deepest, darkest fears to, to share the joyous days with. Everyone wants one. So, I have one question for you. What if we wanted more? Story 2 Escape from Lavender Town I'm not going to sleep tonight. Originally I was gonna go to sleep, but then I realized I promised to get on Skype with someone. So I ended up getting on and later playing this creepypasta game after he told me about it. And holy shiz, I didn't expect to get creeped out at all. I was so freaking wrong. I had a past experience dealing with the whole Lavender Town beta thing. Choose to believe it or not makes no difference to me. So you could say I have a bit of a bad background with it. Either way, I still loved Lavender Town, especially its music, as in the original track, not the beta from Red and Blue. I started playing the game, and at first, I was a little alarmed hearing the beta track, sent off a signal in my brain saying to get the heck off this game and never play it again, but nope. Also for some reason, they mixed in another extra tone with the beta track. Normally I'd be fine with it, 
town's music. If anything, I would enjoy it. But it became highly unnerving and made me very jumpy. To try and add some humor instead of sitting there, getting progressively more creeped out. I read all the people's messages in the weirdest voices possible. Also, at one point, I walked into the Pokemon Center, where there was only one man, and the only thing he said was, I have a terminal illness. I shouldn't have found it so funny, but it was just the most random thing I've ever seen, so why not? It worked to some extent, but the game still managed to get me. I was still on Skype, and at one point, the person I was talking to went silent for a minute. And when he spoke up, I screamed, even though he was just regularly talking and not trying to scare me. I got stuck and asked him how I was supposedly able to escape, and he told me to hit the escape button. I wish I never had. The game went full screen. The music intensified and became distorted. The game itself became a bit distorted and odd. And constantly, there were pictures of a bloody Marowak, ghosts, and other images flashing by. He told me to close it from there and just hit escape again. But it wouldn't close. I tried using Task Manager, but that failed me too. I couldn't continue. I was ready to flip my shiz and slam the laptop shut. I ended up holding the power button down to force my laptop to shut down. And when it started back up, I deleted the game's file, and then permanently deleted it from the recycle bin too. I keep seeing figures out of the corner of my eye, and my paranoia is on overdrive right now. I'm shaking and really want nothing to, to do but to hide under my blankets until sunrise. I shouldn't have been affected by like this, but holy crud, screaming heck. I think I just scarred myself. Nope, nope, nope. Gonna go see if any of my friends are online because I can't stand being alone right now when I'm ready to flip the heck out. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe, it helps the channel a lot. See you next time.